Okay, are we ready to go? Enjoy, did you enjoy painting those little um, candy corn? I know I did. Oh, what was I <laughs> thinking? <laughs> we, <laughs> I know that the directions themselves start with the uh, background plaque, but we're going to save that till the end because we want to get this most important stuff done, which is the line of poisons. Um, I think I like this one and those. So we are going to start with our um, martini glass with the pumpkin. So I'm going to get a little closer to that. And we're going to work on the pumpkin first. So you are going to need golden straw, calico red or country red, whichever one you used, and burnt umber. And you might as well get out lamp black and desert turquoise and warm white. And the first thing we're going to do is dry brush. So we're going to work on this little pumpkin guy first. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to dry brush some golden straw. And he's divided into three sections. So what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush on each of those three sections. You want to treat them as their own little section. Not as one big round circle. So I'm going to go through the center of each of those sections as much as I can and just go right through his facial features. It'll be okay. So I've done the center. Now I'm going to do down the side and that's just going to kind of be on the edge because that's such a small little section. So, so we are going to float some golden straw highlighting also. And that's going to be on the outside edges of each section. So I'm going to start on the outside edge and float a highlight with golden straw. And it's going to be really bright, but that's okay. It tones down and kind of um, when it dries, it gets a little lighter and not as in your face. And then I'm just going to move over to the center section and dry and float the outside edge of that center section. And then I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to do the outside edge again and the outside edge of that center section. The pumpkin looks pretty washed out now. So we are going to let the pumpkin dry a little bit and we're going to go up here to the drink and we're going to dry brush highlighting through the drink and it's basically going to go through the center so it's wide at the top and comes down to the uh, point above the pumpkin and that's going to be with desert turquoise plus warm white. Pick up some desert turquoise pick up a little warm white and just mix them on my palette so I get a lighter value desert turquoise and I'm just going to dry brush highlighting it might not show a whole lot it will show more after we do some shading but I'm just going to go through the center of that drink we can go back to our pumpkin and we are going to float our first layer of shading on our pumpkin with calico red or country red, whichever one you used. And that's going to be on the outside sections next to the center to begin with. So it just kind of butts up against that highlight float you did on the center. So I'm also going to float country red in the bottom of this pumpkin, in the bottom of each section, country red, calico red, whichever one. So I'm going to treat each section as its own little piece and I'm going to float starting up at the side a little bit and come down into the bottom there. 
So I've just deepened up that little point, that little V area. On the center, I'm going to start up on the side, come across the bottom, and come back up the side. And then I'm going to do the other side the same way. We're going to go back to the glass part so that our pumpkin can dry. And with Desert Turquoise, we're going to float shading on the glass part, which is going to be down here, this little, um, the foot of the glass and up above the drink. And that's with straight Desert Turquoise. What you're going to do is this top rim, you're going to treat it as its own section and float some shading on each side of that, walking that color across the top of it just a little bit. Then I'm going to go down the side that's showing, runs right into the uh, drink which was based in Desert Turquoise. On the foot, I'm going to shade the outside edge, and then I'm going to come back when that's dry and shade under the pumpkin and around the candy corn. We're going to go back to our pumpkin, and everywhere that you shaded with that calico red, you're going to go back and shade again with burnt umber. So it's going to be on the outside edges next to the center. And in the top and the bottom. You want to get out a handy dandy liner brush and paint in the eyes and the mouth with lamp black. You can go ahead and base the stem in with burnt umber. You can go back to the glass and finish that shading on it. So that was Desert Turquoise. We're going to go on the glass under that top rim and then on the foot of it next to the um, candy corn and under the pumpkin. So just two places. So under that top rim I'm going to turn my guy around so I can go around the candy corn. Try to keep my finger out of the rim. 
I'm going to go around the candy corn. Basically, you're just going to tuck some color in around that candy corn. And then under the pumpkin. We're going to do a little bit of highlighting above the mouth and to the outside of each of the eyes with um, golden straw, a float of golden straw. Just blend it out so you don't get a line of golden straw. You want a float of golden straw. And it's just going to go outside edge of each eye. Just to highlight that a little bit. And then just a little above the mouth. Even down into that little tooth. Just to make his face stand out a little bit more. In the eyes, we're going to do a little sea stroke float of desert turquoise in the bottom of each eye. So you want to be sure that it's a sea stroke and you can see little sections of black in the corners. So desert turquoise, just a little sea stroke float. In each eye. With your liner brush and lamp black, you're going to give him a little pupil in each eye. It's kind of just like a little set down. You load your brush and then just set down a little oval of lamp black to form his pupils. When those are dry, we'll come back and give him a little highlight. You're going to need um, true blue. I didn't have you get that color out. We need just a touch of true blue. You're going to float shading on the just the drink and it's going to go on down both sides above the pumpkin and the stem and across the top edge with a float of true blue. So all four sides of the drink, not the glass. So I'm going to go up the side. The other side. Do you have a hair dryer that would come in handy? So I'm going to go above the pumpkin and the stem. And I'm going to go across the top edge. There's a highlight on the top right side of the stem of golden straw. So I'm just going to go across the top and down the right side with a float of golden straw on that little stem. And with your liner brush and warm white, you want to give him that little highlight in his pupil. So on the glass itself, and this is going to include over the drink, we're going to float some war a float of warm white down the edges, the sides. But it's going to be just a hair off the edge. And I'm not sure if you can see that here. But again, treating the um, rim as its own little thing, I'm going to do a little float of warm white in the rim. But it's just going to be a hair off the edge. So there'll be just a line of that blue that you can see. And that's going to go on the bottom too. So warm white. And I'm going to keep my fingers out of his eyes. I'm just going to do a little C-stroke float in the top rim. Just off the edge. 
And then I'm, I'm going to turn this so I can do it a little easier. I'm going to do a float of warm white all the way up the side of the glass, just a hair off the edge. And I stop when I get to the rim. And I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm going to turn him upside down. I'm going to go all the way up this side. And then I'm also going to do that little C stroke in the rim. You're also going to do this to the left side of the foot of the glass. You're going to float a warm white highlight along the lower edge of that rim on the glass. Now I can go right on the edge. We're going to dry brush a highlight on the left side. It's going to it's kind of a thin high dry brush highlight, but it's going to go down the left side of the drink and a little bit on the foot. But that's warm white, just a little highlight to give it kind of that shine of a glass. We're not going for technically correct glass here. Just the the um, the look to give you the idea that it's glass. So just a little inside the edge here. I'm going to dry brush a little highlight of warm white down that left side and I'm also going to dry brush a little bit on the foot not much so just on that left side because as long as we're dry brushing warm white we might as well dry brush a highlight on each one of those candy corn and that's just going to go um, through the center a little above the center so whatever you decide is the top of that candy corn go just a little bit above the center on it so I'm gonna go and it's gonna be hard because um, these are so little but I'm just gonna dry brush a little bit of warm white on each of those candy corn then you can wash your brush out we're going to float shading on each candy corn on the bottom edge um, of each candy corn with some very well blended out burnt umber. So you want to blend it on your palette and when you think you blend it enough, blend it just a couple more times just to soften it. And I'm just going to decide which is the bottom and just float some burnt umber along the bottom. And that means I'm going to separate candy corn with this float too. So if there's a candy corn behind another candy corn, you want to make sure you float on it to separate it from the one in front of it. You also want to float next to anything that's in front of the candy corn. So that little green wrapped candy, you want to float on the candy corn next to that.
So each of those candy corns gets a highlight lined on it on the top edge and it's just a line of warm white. You decide where the top is and add a little line of warm white to highlight the top. Easier than floating a highlight. So liner brush and warm white. Ones that are laying on their side are easier to easy to decide what the top is. You're going to need two new colors: cranberry wine and Hauser dark green. And we're going to work on the glass with the eyeballs in it. We are going to float shading on the drink in the glass with cranberry wine, and that's going to be across the top, down both sides across the bottom above the candy. So let's do that first with cranberry wine. You can do it whatever order you want, but all four sides are going to get a float of cranberry wine. So down both sides, across the top, and along the bottom above the candy. You're also going to float this color in the eyeballs, on the whites of the eyeballs. It's going to be on the left side. Of the eyeballs. You're also going to float this color on the drink around the eyeballs. So not, but not where that one eyeball is above the drink. So it's only wherever the eyeball is in the drink. The eyeballs have some uh, blood veins, <laughs> blood veins, um, red veins in their eyes. They come from the back side of the eyeball towards the um, iris, and that's just your liner brush and thinned cranberry wine. So there are bloodshot eyes. And you could put as many or as few as you want. So just think like um, a bloodshot eye, a bad day with allergies, because I know we all don't have hangovers anymore.
we're going to take our liner brush and some golden straw and we're just going to line a highlight on one side of the iris so I did um, the left side of two of them and the right side of the one that's towards the right and it's just a line of golden straw and once you get that on then you're going to go back with Hauser dark green and line shading on the other side so just golden straw in one side of each iris and then you'll come back with Hauser dark green in your liner brush and line shading in the other side there is a highlight dot of warm white in each pupil but we're going to do the shading and dry brushing on the glass before we do that so we don't have to wait for it to dry so just like we did on the first glass we're going to float shading on the glass part with desert turquoise and again it's going to be C strokes at each end of the rim and down the side and then under the rim with desert turquoise so C strokes walking the color across a little bit and down the side stopping when you get to the drink actually I lied not about the color you can go ahead and take this desert turquoise shading all the way down the side but you don't go across the bottom so it even goes on the drink this is what happens when you don't paint something for a long time and then you also want to go under the rim and just like we did on the first glass we're going to float that warm white highlight down the sides and that's going to go all the way down the sides including across the drink just a hair inside the edge and that's warm white so just inside the edge but you don't go across the bottom Oops. I should turn this around so it's easier You're also going to do that float across the lower edge of the rim with warm white. So we are going to come back with a float of burnt umber and we're going to deepen that shading around the eyeballs and across the bottom of the glass with floats of burnt umber so across the bottom of the glass and around the eyeballs you want to deepen that shading with burnt umber
That helps a lot. So we need to let that dry, but we need to come back and uh, do that dry brushed highlight down the left side. But I want to let this floating dry. So we are going to go to our green candy and also our green drink over there as long as we're going to be dry brushing. But with your dry brush and golden straw, let's dry brush some highlighting on this green candy and then also in the drink part of the green glass at the end. So just some golden straw. Highlighting. And then also on the green hurricane looking glass just on the drink with golden straw. And go ahead and wash your brush out. Dry it out really good so we can go back and do our warm white highlight on that glass. So again, just like we did on the first glass, we're going to do that warm white dry brushed highlight down the left side and it does go over part of one of the eyes. That's okay. And now we can put that highlight in each pupil with our liner brush and warm white. You just want to add a little warm white highlight dot in the top of each pupil. We're going to work on this little uh, green candy and we already did the dry brushed highlight and so we're going to um, line some highlighting with our liner brush and golden straw. It's going to be just on those little wrapper ends and this is probably something we'll do on all the candies so this is just the practice part. So I'm going to take my liner brush and golden straw and I'm going to pretend that I'm highlighting, putting some uh, wrinkles in that uh, wrapper straw. So I just pulled three little golden straw lines, kind of fat, on the wrapper ends, if that makes sense at all. So one through the middle and one on each side. There are some little stripes on this candy and they are put on with um, lamp black. If you need to put the pattern on you can or you can get out your chalk pencil and just kind of sketch them on there. kind of like a peppermint candy and that's lamp black and your liner brush you should probably still be able to crack open your lamp black oops that one got a little straight oh well it'll be okay So we need to let that dry before we come back and dry brush highlighting on it. So let's get out just a touch of Irish moss and we'll work on the cupcake wrapper while we let those black stripes dry. And we're going to float a highlight on our cupcake wrapper. So Irish moss plus a touch of golden straw just to lighten it up a little bit. And we're just going to float a highlight 
next to each one of those um, lines that are on our cupcake racker, ra racker, our cupcake wrapper. But when you get to, there's one that has a line that comes from a point. You're going to change the side that you put that highlight on. So you're going to flip your brush over. So Irish Moss plus a touch of Golden Straw just to lighten it up a little bit. Because our base coat was Irish Moss. And I'm going to float. I need a little bit more uh, Golden Straw. So I'm going to float a highlight next to each line. And then I'm going to flip my brush over and float a highlight on the coming from the other side when I get to that line that's down the center coming from a point. If that I can I don't know how else to explain that. This is also going to be a, a highlight float across the top edge of the cupcake wrapper. I can't say wrapper. So the top of each of those little zigzags is going to get a highlight float. And it's not going to show up a whole lot until we get the shading on. So don't worry about it too much. We're going to go back to our green candy and we're going to float some shading with Hauser Dark Green. The first place we want to go is inside those twisted ends. So you want to touch a little shading inside those twisted ends. You're also going to take and add those little gathers onto the ends. And the way I like to do that is I corner load my brush just like I'm going to do a float. But I stay on, I come on my chisel edge. Let me see if I can do this. And I just set down the brush. So my color is next to the main part of the candy. And I'm setting it down in between those little highlights that I lined on to give me those little gathers. So chisel edge in between those highlights. Just set your brush down and you'll get those little gathers. And then you need to float Hauser Dark Green all the way around the outside edge of the round part of the candy. So you could do it like two C strokes just to make it easy. As long as we're floating with Hauser Dark Green, we can go to the cupcake wrapper and float Hauser Dark Green. Let's do it along the bottom next to the candy and the candy corn. You also want to go down the outside edges with Hauser Dark Green. And you're also going to go on those um, folds opposite of where you highlight it. So if I highlighted, oops, I highlighted on the left side, I did it. I'm going to go, whoop, turn my brush around, I'm going to go right next to where I highlighted. So I'm going to go here, here, just to give it the look that it's a zigzag uh, cupcake wrapper. 
Yours is going to look much better than mine. We're going to go back to our little candy. And on the round part of the candy, you want to dry brush a brighter highlight with warm white. And it's just going to be like in the center. And then with your liner brush and warm white, you're going to line a highlight, much like we did on the candy corn. Just, um, I did it kind of top left side. We're going to work on the cupcake itself. Oh, there's so much work to do to this. Unbelievable. No, I'm just teasing. Just take your liner brush, pick up some burnt umber, and pick up some golden straw, and just kind of uh, mix it slightly on your palette. It doesn't have to be mixed completely. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and just tap some texture onto my cupcake. It was this or uh, bring another color in, and I thought, eh, we can just do this. So burnt umber with some golden straw. We do need to come back and do some shading, but we'll let that dry. And we'll work on the uh, frosting. And we're going to dry brush highlighting through the center of each of these sections of frosting with golden straw. And don't wash your brush out because we will pick up warm white and dry brush lighter highlighting on those sections. So I'm just going to go golden straw through the center of each of those sections. And then just pick up a little warm white on your dirty brush to get a lighter value golden straw. And dry brush a little bit brighter highlight on each of those sections. So we did golden straw and then golden straw plus warm white. Dry brushed highlights on the frosting. We're going to float some shading on that cake, that cupcake, with burnt umber plus just a touch of lamp black. And that's just going to go on the cake above the cupcake wrapper. So burnt umber plus just a touch of lamp black to darken it up a little bit. And it's just going to go right above the cupcake wrapper. You're going to need a heritage brick just a little bit to float some shading on that frosting. So with heritage brick you're going to float shading down both sides of the frosting. We'll do that first. So we'll go down both sides. And then you're going to go across the bottom of each of those sections with heritage brick. So I would start at the bottom of the cupcake. Float some shading across the bottom of that section. And then jump up to the next section and float shading on the bottom of that section.
and then the bottom of the top section. There are some little sprinkles on this cupcake and they're done with lamp black. You can make them whatever color you want. I just chose lamp black because I wanted to be easy on myself. So they're just little set downs, little ovals, kind of like you did the um, eyes in the first pumpkin of lamp black. You want them big enough that you can put a highlight in each one. So you want them bigger and you don't want as many because you got to highlight each one. And that's lamp black. They kind of remind me of watermelon seeds. So each one of those little uh, sprinkles gets a warm white highlight. I just did it with my liner brush, picked up some warm white. And tapped a little highlight in each one. Each one of those little um, sprinkles is going to get a shadow lined below it with your liner brush and some thinned heritage brick because we want to set them down into the frosting a little bit. So I'm just going to take my liner brush and some thinned heritage brick and I'm just going to line a little shadow underneath each little um, sprinkle. So you're going to need to paint some little dots, um, not little, they're kind of big, on your purple candy with colors from your palette. It doesn't, it, you can pick whatever color you want. Um, so whatever you have on your palette, paint a little dot of that color, circle of that color on that purple candy. I'll paint a green dot. Uh, hot Irish moss. We're not going to shade and highlight all of these, so don't worry about that. I have been known to do that, though. And the dots aren't all the same size. They're all different sizes. I'm going to do some desert turquoise. some golden straw oh, maybe I'll just do a warm white one so while we let those dots dry Let's go to the blue candy. And what I want to do is I want to dry brush highlighting on the center part of that blue candy with warm white. So I'm just going to go on this blue candy. And yes, part of it's going to get covered up um, by the stripe. But there's going to be little hints of warm white come out from behind the stripe. So just dry brush a little warm white on the center of that blue candy. You're going to need two new colors, purple cow 
and dioxazine purple. We're going to um, float shading on this purple candy with the diox purple. So it's going to go all the way around that center part of the candy again, just like we did on the green one. So you can do two C strokes. of diox purple on the middle part of the candy inside the ends of the wrapper with diox purple so just kind of tuck your little corner of your brush inside the ends and you're going to add those gathers on the end just like we did on the green one so chisel edge color next to the middle candy and just set down two little gathers on each side we're also going to line a highlight on those uh, ends of the wrappers we're going to pick up purple cow plus a little bit of warm white. I want it a little bit brighter than Purple Cow. And I'm just going to add those little highlights in the ends. Let me turn this one around so I can do the other side a little easier. So it's center and two sides. And then also line a highlight across the top of the candy, too. The blue candy, that middle fat stripe, you're just going to paint it in with true blue. If you can still get that open. There are little warm white stripes that outline that wider stripe. So liner brush and warm white. Just add the thin stripe on either side. And this candy gets shaded with true blue. On the main section, you're going to go like a C stroke on both sides, but you have to go around the purple candy wrapper. Kind of wipes out your white stripe, but that's okay. You can kind of see it underneath. And then you're also going to put those gathers in on the ends. And before we highlight the ends of, of that candy, I would like us to go back with a dry brush of warm white across the top of that candy, the blue candy, and in the bottom below that lined highlight on the purple candy. And that's with warm white. So I'm going to go on the purple candy just to brighten it up a little bit. And then on the blue candy in the top. We're going to line that highlight on the ends of the blue candy with desert turquoise plus a touch of warm white. I think I need a little more warm white. One side's only going to get two little strokes. And the other side will get three or four, depending on how many gathers you put. And for some reason I didn't line a highlight on that blue candy, but if you wanted to, you could with warm white just across the top. 
And we are going to go work on the wine glass next. So you're going to need, you have purple cow out, you're going to need black plum. You're going to dry brush highlighting on the wine with purple cow. And it can kind of go through the bat because um, it gets painted lamp black so it doesn't matter. But all through the center of the wine you want to dry brush highlighting with purple cow. You're going to float shading on the wine across the top and down the sides and across the bottom with the black plum. And you can again go right through the, the bat. So I go across the top of the wine and down the sides and around the bottom. You can also Float a little bit of shading around the back with black plum, but only where he's on the wine. Then you can paint your bat in with lamp black. My neighbor has a puppy. We're going to go work on our ghost a little bit while we let the bat dry. So you're going to need some slate gray. So you want to get just a touch. We don't need a whole lot. And we're going to float some shading on our ghost. And that's going to go in the bottom of his body, his little tail or whatever you want to call it. You're going to do a float of slate gray. You're going to go on his little arms next to his body and then you're also going to do that float to make the um, inside of his arms with slate gray. So in the bottom of his body a float of slate gray and on his arms next to his body Oops, I guess I could be on camera, huh? And then you just want to touch a slate gray float to make the inside of his arms. Okay. 
I'm also going to take my liner brush and some thinned slate gray and I'm going to line a shadow above each eye and to the left side of his mouth. So just like we did those uh, shadows for the um, sprinkles on the cupcake, we're going to line a shadow above each eye with slate gray. And then you just want to line to the left side of his mouth. We're going to go back to our bat. He should be dry now. And we're going to dry brush some highlighting on his little body and his wings with desert turquoise. So I'm just going to dry brush some desert turquoise on each wing. And also on his little body. I'm going to float a highlight on the wings and the body with desert turquoise. So just a side load float. I'm going to go on the outside edge of the wing and I'm also going to go to form that little, um, I don't know what it is, spine on his wing. So I did the outside edge of the left wing and I just wiped out my spine. And then from point to point with the desert turquoise to form the little spine on his wing. And that's going to show up better when we float shading. So do the outside edge of the wing and then from point to point to make that little spine. And then you're also going to go on his body just on the left side. We'll go back and work on our ghost while we let the highlights on our bat dry. He has little cheeks that are your red, calico red or country red plus warm white to make a pink. And you want to give him some little cheeks that sit right on top of his smile. I dry brushed him. You can wash him in. You can stipple him in. However you want to do his little cheeks. So I'm just going to give him a couple little rosy cheeks. Now I'm going to float some... Uh, warm white highlighting on my ghost. You know that sounds weird because he was painted with warm white but this just helps to clean up the edges a little bit. So with warm white I'm going to float across the top of his head, the top of his little, I wanted to say wings, his arms, and then the little tip of his tail just to brighten it up a little bit. We're going to go back to our bat and we're going to float some shading on him with lamp black. So we're going to shade um, on his wings next to his little body And then you're going to go on his wings next to that highlight float that you did with the desert turquoise on to make that spine. You just want to touch a little lamp black shading in there to make that stand out a little bit more. And then you're going to do the opposite side of his body that you highlighted on, you're going to float a lamp black shadow. 
so that's going to be on the right side. You're going to line a highlight across the top of his wings, the top of his ears, and then a stroked highlight on the left side of his belly with desert turquoise plus warm white. And that's with your liner brush. So desert turquoise plus a touch of warm white. You're going to line the top edge of his wings. You're going to line just the tippy top of his ears and then give him a little highlight on the left side of his belly. You're going to paint his eyes, kind of like a set down, with warm white. He also has a couple little teeth that are warm white. So paint the tiniest triangles you've ever painted. To make his little teeth. So we're going to let the eyes dry. We'll go back over to our ghost. And we need to fix up his eyes a little bit. So we just did that desert turquoise sea stroke in the bottom. So now I'm going to take lamp black. And I'm going to clean that stroke up and make it look like it's just in the very bottom of his eye. Instead of all over his eye. He has a little warm white highlight in the top of his pupil, or in the top of his eye. So liner brush and warm white, just add a little highlight dot. That makes him look cuter. And then also you want to take your liner brush and warm white and just add a little highlight. Just touch a little warm white on that blue stroke in the bottom of his eyes. So we just have a couple, uh, a couple more things to do to the bat and then we can move on to the glass. Um, in his eyes, you want to float just a touch of Irish moss in the bottom of each eye. and You don't have to worry about this being made into a stroke or anything. We just want to touch a little bit of green in each eye. So just a hint of green in the bottom of each eye with Irish moss. And then you just want to give him a pupil with some lamp black. So just a little dot of lamp black. We're going to go over to the green drink and paint our little bug, which is just a, a bunch of circles, with purple cow. So just four little circles of purple cow. So you're going to pick up purple cow and some warm white on your liner brush and you're just going to line a highlight in the top half of each of those circles on that bug. And then with your liner brush and dioxazine purple, you're going to line shading in the bottom of each of those circles. Ok, 
Okay, we're going to go back to our wine glass. And we are going to float shading down the sides and on the stem underneath the wine and above the candy corn with desert turquoise. That's going to go over the wine and everything. So desert turquoise down the sides, across the bottom. I think I want a little more color in there. Yes, it goes on some of your bat. It's okay. Don't do the top edge of the glass. I'm going to go on the stem, under the wine, and above the candy corn. I'm going to go above the wine, and that, that includes going above that little tip of the bat wing that goes out of the wine. So I'm just going to go across on the glass above the wine itself. Okay, we're going to um, do that warm white float just inside the edge. And that's going to go, here we go, all the way around. And it comes just a hair off the edge in the bottom of the wine glass too. And just a hair off the edge on the stem. And that's with warm white. I need to add more paint. You're also going to float warm white across the top edge of the glass. Now we're going to do that dry brushed warm white highlighting again just like we did on the first two glasses but this time it's going to flip over to the right side of the glass. Now if your stem, um, we need to come back and refloat that deep tur uh, desert turquoise shading because it gets a little white when we add those floats down the side. So we're going to come back and reinforce the deep turquoise at the top of the stem and on the stem next to the um, candy corn. There's a little drip of wine on the top left side, and that's just with magenta and your liner brush. So just a line. Follow the shape of the glass, though. The glass is kind of round, so it's not going to drip straight down. It's going to curve like the glass does. And then a larger little comma at the end for the drip. That drip gets a little warm white highlight. 
just in the bigger drippy part. And then you're also going to thin down some desert turquoise with your liner brush and line a shadow on the glass next to the drip on the right side. So just a thin little line of desert turquoise right next to the dribble. So we're going to go to the back to our little bug. And he has little hairs coming out and little legs and little antenna. He actually has eyes and a little mouth. And those are all done with your liner brush and lamp black. So think like a hairy bug, the kind you always want to find in your drink. So with thin lamp black, you just want to add those little hairs and his eyes and mouth and antenna and legs. Believe it or not, his eyes get a little tiny warm white highlight in the top of them. So it's kind of like barely wave your brush over that. And he does have a couple of little cheeks, which you can put on with calico red or magenta or um, whatever kind of pinky ready color you have but just just a couple of little dots he needed cheeks I don't know why now there are uh, four bubbles in this drink and so you want to just base those in real quick with a wash of warm white so just thin down some warm white and paint them in and there are going to be a couple on our background too but we'll paint those in when we work on the background. So just paint them in with some thinned warm white. So since you did them with a wash, we can go ahead and float a highlight on the left in the left side of each bubble with warm white. So the left side of each bubble gets a float of warm white. And then the right side you're going to float with Irish moss. So we're going to float shading on the drink with Hauser Dark Green and that's going to go down both sides and above the ghost and it's also going to go across the top edge and you are going to float right straight through that bubble that's halfway out of the drink and that's all with Hauser dark green so down both sides and above the ghost And then across the top 
even going through that bubble. You're going to line a shadow to the left side of each bubble um, with Hauser Dark Green, but not this top part of this bubble that's out of the drink. So wherever a bubble is in the drink, you want to line a shadow to the left side on the drink with Hauser Dark Green. Probably not quite this dark. This is a little dark. That's better. And then there's a little warm white highlight in the top left of each bubble. We're going to float just a touch of shading around that little bug with Hauser Dark Green. So just a hit and miss. It doesn't have to be perfectly around him wherever he goes. Just touch a little bit above him and below him. And then we're going to do our glass thing. We're going to float desert turquoise in the top rim on each side. Down the sides you can it it doesn't have to go above the ghost head and then on the uh, foot of the glass. So desert turquoise and that's right on the edge. So in the rim, walk it across a little bit, and then down the sides. In the top rim, and then in the bottom foot. So that'll be under the ghost, and then down that side. And then you're going to come back with your warm white floats. So across the lower edge of the rim, you float warm white. And then you're going to do that warm white float that's just a hair off the edge. And it stops when it gets to the ghost. I'm going to turn my guy around so it's easier. And just like we did on the wine glass stem, we're going to come back and float this little area with desert turquoise again, just to uh, reinforce it.
one more thing to do and then we can set this piece aside and start working on that um, plaque itself. And what we need to do is that dry brushed warm white highlight down the right side of the uh, drink glass. So one of the first things we're going to do to the plaque is we're going to float shading all the way around the outside edge and that includes around these white letters with grape juice. So you may want to get a mop brush out in case you want to soften this float a little bit by mopping it. So I'm going to start over here by my R which seems like a good place to start and just float all the way around the outside edge and I might want to get me a larger brush and when I get into the corners I like always like to um, kind of walk the color out a little bit so it rounds those corners out a little bit more. So just grape juice all the way around the purple part of the plaque. We're going to float some Irish moss in the bottom of each of those uh, letters in Pick Your, the white letters, about halfway, walk it about halfway up or more. But Irish moss in the bottom of each of those letters. Now if you feel like you want to clean up the top edge of each of those letters, you can float warm white in the top. Even though I know that's the color they were based in, sometimes it's nice to just brighten and clean up that top edge. It does really make a difference. So just a quick little highlight float of warm white in the top of each letter. And then you do come back with grape juice and just tuck a little shading underneath each letter. It doesn't have to be everywhere and it doesn't have to be perfect. We have a stripe that goes around underneath there so it's not um, important that it be perfect. unless you're a perfectionist.
we're going to move to the other lettering. You're going to need melon and cranberry wine. And what we're going to do is we are going to dry brush highlighting on that red lettering with melon. And it's just going to go through the center of the lettering. And if you start dry brushing and it's not light enough to suit you, you can always pick up a little warm white on it. But I'm just going to dry brush melon through the center of each of those letters. Oop, I picked up water off my piece. Okay, you're going to need your uh, Punchinello, your Star Stencil, the Tile Stencil. You may have gotten a big one or a little one, but you're going to need those three things out. And we're going to start um, adding interest to the background of our piece by stenciling. First, we're going to stencil some faint little dots with our Punchinello and warm white. You don't want these to be real bright. You want them to be um, nice and soft and they can just go randomly around the lettering and don't worry about where the drinks are going to be placed because they'll cover them up. So with warm white and your punchinello first just start stenciling some random clusters of dots with warm white. We're going to go back to our red lettering and we're going to float cranberry wine in the bottom half of each of those letters. So just like we did the green on the white letters, we're going to do cranberry wine in the bottom of these letters. This one you have to be a little more careful because the cranberry wine is going to show up if you get on the background. Now in this lettering, you're going to thin down some grape juice and you're going to line that shadow to the top and left of each letter on the background with that thinned grape juice. So to the top and left, just line a little shadow of thin grape juice next to each of those red letters. And that's just going to help pop them off the background a little bit.
You want to get out your um, tile stencil or whatever stencil you wanted to use in place of it. And we're just going to add random squares with desert turquoise plus warm white. And I don't know if you can see it on here, but I didn't mix it completely. So some of the squares are darker turquoise and some of them are lighter. But just here and there, stencil some of these little... Uh, squares on with desert turquoise plus warm white and they can be right on top of the um, uh, circles this dots that you did And now you're going to add stars with golden straw plus warm white. You want them to be a little lighter than straight golden straw. And any star stencil you have will do. Thankfully, I don't shade and highlight or line a shadow next to each one. It's I kind of leave them alone. There are some scrolls. I didn't have a stencil for that, so I lined uh, some scrolls with Irish moss here and there on the background. This was just to pull some of the colors from the um, overlay piece into the background. So I added some little scrolls, five or six of them. You're going to line them and then you're going to go back and line a little highlight on them so they stand out a little more. Because you went to all that work to put them on there. They might as well stand out a little bit. There's one more thing to do to this background, but I want us to work on our little uh, skull and crossbones and get that done. So you want to get your skull and crossbones out and some slate gray. We're going to float some shading on our skull and crossbones on the crossbones next to the skull with slate gray.
So just right at the base of the crossbones. You're also going to float slate gray in the in the end of the crossbones. Um, let me see. Let me get a little closer. So, just kind of a little C stroke, right where that crossbone makes that little dip. So, just a little C stroke of slate gray in the end of the crossbones. just to form this socket. You're also going to float slate gray across the top of his head. across the bottom where his mouth is going to be. You're going to take your liner brush and some thin slate gray and just line a shadow above each eye with that wash of slate gray. Oh, also above his nose with that slate gray. Almost forgot that. He's got some little cheeks. He's a friendly skeleton. And they're uh, calico red or country red plus some warm white to make a nice little pink. And those are just on those parts of his face that form his cheek area that kind of jut out a little bit. So you just want to give him some little pink cheeks with your calico red and warm white. So you can paint his eyes, his nose, and line the little details like in the um, joint area of the crossbones and add his little teeth with lamp black. And he has a couple of little eyebrows too. Um, they're his angry eyebrows. So just paint his eyes with lamp black and his nose. Then you're just going to line a little detail on each of those little C-stroke joints that we added in the crossbones. And where the crossbones go behind the head, you want to outline that with a thin line of lamp black.
and you're going to add his little um, what looks like teeth along the lower edge. There are just a couple of warm white highlights in each of his eyes. So I did a little, kind of like a little stroke and a dot. And then you can set your little skulls aside. You're going to want your pattern for the background because we need to put on a couple of bubbles and that stir stick. So just like the bubbles that we did inside the green glass, these uh, two and a half bubbles that are outside of the glass, get based in with a wash of warm white. The little stir stick, you just want to paint it with lamp black. Oop, I guess I could back up. So it's just a line of lamp black. You just want to line a little highlight with warm white on that stir stick. And this is in your directions in case you're tired and don't want to finish. But there are three little balls of calico red or country red, whichever red you used. They're bottom one is bigger, then, then it gets smaller, and then it gets smaller to form the end of the stir stick. Now you could dot them, but then you'd have to wait a long time to let them dry. If you paint them in, they'll dry faster. But while we let them dry, we can go over to our bubbles on the other side. They get a highlight float on the left side with warm white just like our bubbles did inside the glass so just warm white on the left side and then Irish moss on the right side Each of those bubbles, of course, gets a warm white highlight in the top left side. And then a shadow on the background with a wash of grape juice. You're going to line that on the left side. So it goes on the background but next to the bubble. And that's with thin grape juice. Go back to the stir stick. In each of those red dots, you just want to line a shadow in the bottom edge with cranberry wine. So just a quick little line of cranberry wine. And then each one gets a warm white highlight dot. One more thing. Three minutes to do it. No. <laughs> this is something that you can do later. Um, it's really simple. It's just a 
borderline of warm white that goes all the way around the uh, edge let me get wider goes all the way around the edge of the background and it also goes down and around the lettering that goes across the top but underneath pick your and that's just with thin warm white once you do that you can glue your overlay in place sign your piece and you are done